To all you atomic veterans out there, this is a brand new memorial at our cemetery, West Weber, Utah. My dad's name, Supreme Sacrifice, Dwayne e. Blanche. He was an atomic veteran killed in the Nevada test site. Leukemia. None of you guys got any respect. You didn't walk around with purple hearts on your car. You didn't walk around with medals. But at least I, I challenge all you cemeteries around the country to start giving these people some respect. The government's going to give them no respect. It was all covered up. Atomic veterans. They tested nuclear bombs on these guys. These guys were Special Forces Marine. My father's name was Dwayne E. Blanche. He was drafted. The only person in all of West Weber that was freaking drafted into the Marines in the Korean War. They took him to the Nevada test site. They tested nuclear bombs on him. Over 100,000. They did it at the Bikini Islands. They killed them all. They got no money. They got no honors. They got no respect. They got no medals. Here's his draft card. You open up Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation. The first picture he has is this exact draft card. You know, the same type of one of a young soldier. He didn't look too happy that day. 1954, he was drafted. My grandma used to always say that the draft board out here, two of the members dodged the draft in World War II, and they drafted him. My other uncle was on there. His older brother was a World War II D-Day vet, Marine. These are his dog tags right here. You can see how they're wore out all the way down through here because I wore them for so long. I wore them forever. There was five brothers. Lived right there in West Weber. Harold, the oldest, stood on Normandy Beach on D-Day, fought in the Battle of the Balls. Look it up on World War II's site. His name's right there. He's still alive. Of course, Vern, the other brother, died of romantic fever at 12 years old. My dad drafted. My mom used to say he looked just like Elvis with muscles. I watched him zip him up and put him in the body bag. The Bush administration promised, oh yeah, we're going to dig into this. We're going to help these guys. They didn't do shit. They did nothing. These guys got no respect. This guy was of honor. When he was dying, this is a fact. They had him down at the U hospital. They were guinea pigging him. He had the type of leukemia. It's called acute blastic leukemia. There's no hope. All these guys died from it. They killed them all. They gave the downwinders in southern Utah 200,000. You know what? The government could take their money and stick it right in there. I don't want their... But you know what? How about a little dignity? How about a little bit of respect for these guys? They got none. His other brother... Claude worked at the Pentagon, high brass. He had a chance to play in the NFL. He turned it down to go in as a fighter pilot. No, that's the type of people these people were. That's it. They got no respect. None of them. None. You know, our town has finally done the right thing. The only other brother, my Uncle Larry, who just was lucky enough not to fall into the cracks, just came between Korea and Nam, he would have been right in too. You know, he was part of the group who did this. You know, I'm very proud of those guys. You know, he paid the ultimate sacrifice, and they put it up there. You know, they guinea-pigged him so hard, he had these beautiful brown eyes, burned a pigment right out of his eyes, sores on his freaking tongue. They knew he was dying. They were still guinea-pigging him. My Uncle Claude was high brass at the Pentagon. He investigated this for a long time. He says, even I run into black doors. Well, under the Freedom of Information Act, it's all out there. And if you don't believe me, take the tour down there. Go down to Las Vegas. I've been on it. It's a, it's a museum now. I took the tour. Go out there to the Nevada test site and look at it. Take a look. Take at the videos they got. Take the pictures they got. Look at it. They took those Marines and they stuck them at ground zero. He said, he, they, he put his hands over his face like this, at ground zero, he said he could see his bones. Then, he comes home, blown to smithereens, he's critical condition. The word from the Marines tells my grandmother and my mother was, oh, first we were taking his tonsils out and he went into cardiac arrest. That freaking story went out the window. Then it was, oh, he was hit with friendly fire. They were shooting mortars on a test site and blew up. Well, he kept us safe. And these Marines are all Semper Fi. You want to talk Semper Fi, this guy? My, like I said, my mom used to say he looked just like Elvis Presley with muscles. He did. This guy was something. And if you think this is political, Republican, Democrat, my family, 
that I was just talking about. We have some of them that are so staunch, dug in, neoconservative, Republican, it's unbelievable. We live in Utah. We have other ones that are so staunch, liberal, something. My dad was pretty much, you know, in the middle like most people. I don't know. I think he would lean more towards Democrats, but who cares? I mean, really, does it freaking matter? You know, how about a little bit of respect for these guys? So I challenge all you cemeteries and all people around, at least honor these guys. There was 100,000 of them. Families out there know who they are. They know. The downwinders in southern Utah, our old governor, Scott Matheson, he, he brought this in light. He died of leukemia. The people in southern Utah, the children played in the schoolyards, the downfall fell over them, killed them all. You know, I'm sure it killed millions all across this country. You know, the downfall just didn't, they didn't just draw a line down there at Nephi, which that's what the government did. Since everybody lives below this line, we'll give them $200,000 each. Our family and the Bush administration promised. What a lie. He promised. They promised. We sent in all the paper documents. They didn't even try. They didn't care. Well, wh wh why would you think? I mean, a draft dodger, George Bush, he'd say, he's going to do anything? You know, his father had dignity and honor. He didn't. You know, it, it, it's disgusting. But again, his name was Dwayne Blanche. He died of leukemia, like all the atomic veterans died of leukemia. There was 100,000 of them. Every single one of them died of leukemia. Thank you. Turned out nice. A whole bunch of Blanches, our names. A whole bunch of Blanches on there. There's my Uncle Harold Blanche. There's my cousin Roy Blanche. World War II guys. And we live in a small community, but this community has always served. Norm Blanche up there at the top. He's dead. He was a nom guy. They got no respect either. Don Blanche. There's my Uncle Harold right down there at the bottom. Look him up on the World War II website. Normandy Beach, D-Day.